Burt met Lonnie Anderson for the first time on the Merv Griffin Show in 1978. There was no sense at the time that anything would happen between us at some future date. I was heavily involved with Sally, and Lonnie was married to an actor, Ross Pacal, her second husband. He was just so charming, and he asked me how Ross was handling everything. I remember thinking, how nice of him to even inquire about that. Lonnie's husband, Ross, was in fact struggling with her fame as he was referred to as Mr. Lonnie Anderson. The marriage broke down and Lonnie filed for divorce in 1981. Burt Reynolds, Jr. In December of 1981, Burt was honored as Entertainer of the Year. The program was one of those big televised tributes that drew everyone from President Ronald Reagan to my parents. Lonnie also attended. She snuggled up beside me and a breathy voice whispered in my ear, I want to have your baby. Hmm, I thought. That's an interesting way to say hello. Lonnie was a popular sex symbol at the time, thanks to her role as receptionist Jennifer Marlowe on the popular sitcom WKRP in Cincinnati. Her work on the show earned her two Emmys and three Golden Globe nominations. I'm really going to miss you, Johnny. <laughs> I can remember the first time I was aware of him was on television. And my mother was just carrying on about this guy that looked so much like my dad. And she had this enormous crush on him. This was pre-mustache. And yeah, he is gorgeous. He has a quality that I don't think many people have. You can be funny. What if you turn over and it falls out? And you can be deadly dangerous. And it's a hard combination. At the time, Bert was involved with former Miss America Tawny Little, who was with him at the Entertainer of the Year show. Lonnie was involved with her WKRP in Cincinnati co-star, Gary Sandy. I didn't want to do a story on how these stations done since the format change. Don't worry, I'll get rid of him. <laughs> but that didn't stop Bert, and shortly after, they had their first date during New Year's in 1981. I tried to get her to go out with me for quite a long time, and she didn't want to because she thought I was that guy in the, in the magazine, you know. He'd call and say, I want you to come and spend Christmas with me. And so I said, uh, would you please uh, just let me, give me a chance, you know, and come down and meet my family. And I said, no, I have my entire family here for Christmas. I don't even know you. And he said, well, what would it take? Invite your whole family. I'll, I'll pay for everybody to come for Christmas. And I said, no, we're not going to do that. I don't even know you. And I kept trying and trying and trying. Then he called me every night all the way through Christmas and would talk for hours on the phone. Finally, after literally a year, I'm persistent when it comes to blondes. By the end of that week, he said to me, okay, have we talked enough for a third date? She flew down to Florida and she came down there for two days, stayed a week and a half. He picked me up in his private helicopter and we flew over South Florida on the way to his home. It was just so romantic and he was so sweet and so charming. I was swept away. For Lonnie, there was something special about Bert that brought her close to him. I'd lost my dad. Uh, he was only 54 when he died, and I adored him. He looks like my father. He has a great sense of humor, like my dad, and he had that same power and strength. Lonnie seemed as if she'd wear me out before I got old. The woman defied explanation. She was unlike any other with whom I'd ever been. Exhausted from four days of lust and laughs, I thought I'd hit the jackpot. I, I couldn't believe what a great time that we'd had together. Some guys hit their 40s and have a midlife crisis. I, on the other hand, fell in love. Lonnie and I dated for about two months before the news leaked out to the public. Bert's girlfriend, Tawny, was said to be humiliated by Bert. But she quickly moved on and married Dukes of Hazard star John Schneider in 1983. Not only was John best known for a series built on the legacy of Smokey and the Bandit, he actually had a role in the 1977 classic. Skip school, talk my way onto the set. At the end of the day, when they were shooting, the last thing they did was Jackie Gleason driving off him and the wheel falls off and rolls into the crowd and hits this tall 16-year-old in the shins, and that's me. Decades later, Schneider would attempt to reboot Burt's most famous role in the film, Stand On It. Let's haul ass. Gary Sandy, on the other hand, found it harder to move on and made the set of WKRP an unpleasant place for Lonnie to be. The show was ultimately canceled at the end of the 1981-82 season. The beginning of our relationship was so tabloidy. We were just a spectacle all the time. We were bombarded. I mean, we could not leave the house. 
People got onto the property. I was serving him breakfast one morning. There was somebody in the window. It was hard to have a relationship in that atmosphere. Somehow we did it. Bert had really fallen for Lonnie. And he said, Elaine, she's beautiful. She looks like a little Barbie doll. And I'll never forget, I walked out, and yes, she was. Just looked like a Barbie doll. She was beautiful. He even hired artists to do multiple portraits of her. He loved art, so he would pick out a favorite artist and then he would commission them to do a portrait of me. So pretty soon, there are a lot of portraits of me. Above all else were her looks. Whether platinum blonde hair, impossible curves, perfect skin, blinding smile, Lonnie seemed to combine the best of all the great Hollywood blondes. Marilyn Monroe, Jean Harlow, and Judy Holliday. To an old high school football player like me, she was a grown-up homecoming queen. She always looked impeccable. She and Bert were very happy during those times, and they had a lot of fun, too. Watch for new movie reviews and documentary series. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell so you know when new reviews arrive.